to a red flag. Today is Wednesday. Oh, February first. Monday is my birthday. Um, boom, forty-six. Look at that. It's a sweet deal. Really? Mine's yeah. the next day. Boom, forty-seven. Look at you. You don't look at the ever eighteen. All right, here goes. Um, so here's the deal. Forty-six, <laughs> not even a special age. Um, Monday. Oh. Uh, so oh, uh, that came because today is February first. February first. All right. Um, with that said, take out this sheet. I'll say a little bit about it. This is standard one. Standard one is almost like a freebie. Um, there are two pieces of it that I'll mention, and then I'll, I'll let it go. So I'm not doing all of it. Uh, if you don't have a highlighter, grab a highlighter. Um, take out the sheet. If you don't have the sheet, um, then take it out. Hey, what if I ace this section? What if I don't even really need this section? Um, could I be looking at maybe some of my six pages? Uh, you could. Try to do dual stuff. Um, you can kind of look at it um, with us. We didn't do the back, so eventually when it's time for you to do six pages, uh, this back section is, uh, is going to be important uh, for you to kind of complete if you choose for this to be one of your six pages. All right, so here it comes. Um, unless your computer isn't coming up, I say don't pay attention to the computer right now. Um, take a look at this guy. Let me say it to you, uh, and then we'll move away from it. 45 minutes. Um, sometimes seem long, but to a teacher, sometimes seem short. I mean, what does Thomas want to highlight on this section so that when you get back to your standard one, you can double check this section? Uh huh. All right. Um, were you here last class? Oh, well, let me see what I can do. Um, if there were two problems I, was, um, I would highlight on here, uh, one of the main ones I would highlight is. What happens when you have a, um, a fraction? What happens when you have a fraction uh, at the very beginning? So I'll highlight this one third. Again, um, most of you have writing, so you're not writing brand new. Those who are writing brand new, uh, you won't get everything you need. You'll have to go back and watch the video, um, which you get on YouTube. How do I get to the video? Let's type in YouTube. I type in Thomas Algebra 2A. Usually that will take you to where it is. Um, the day that you miss class, like, oh, shoot, I missed Monday, uh, uh, February the, um, January the 30th. Then you look for the dates. We put dates. Um, they'll give topics. Uh, worst case scenario, somehow ask me, but uh, I'll ask you first to go in and look for it. Then I'll help you find it. Someone say out loud, what happens um, when there's a fraction? Does it make the picture wider or narrower? Yeah. Say it again. Uh, it makes it wider. It's just a memory thing on that one. Um, <clears throat> Are you going to let me write? Yeah, it's going to come out later. Um, no big deal. It's just a memory deal. Um, and again, for those who you ace the section, again, you can kind of be in and out watching and writing, watching and writing. Um, the next one, uh, so wider looks like this if you're sketching it. No big deal. Um, the five in front, does it make it wider or narrower? Yeah. Narrower. A whole number makes it narrower. It feels weird. It seems like a, a whole number makes things bigger. Um, but it doesn't. What it says is um, like a rocket taking off. Um, if a rocket was taking off from the ground, the five says, I want you to leave the ground even faster into the air than the original guy. And this slow guy, this one fourth, even faster than him. The last thing I will say on this section is I'm going to go down to where the pictures are. So the wider, narrower thing. I want you to know that because that's a freebie. There are two other things that I'm going to say quickly, and I'm leaving this section. It's one of the easy sections that it's, it's broken. So if this is a broken section, uh, it's fine. Um, the other part I would say is if they ask me to, um, to change the original um, function, this guy here, here's the original. Um, if they said, please reflect it over the x-axis, that's math talk for make it um, point down. How do I do that? Very simple. To make this guy point down the original, all I have to do for the equation is to put a negative sign in front of the original equation. There's the original equation. To make it point down, I'll put a minus sign there. I win. This is standard one. I expect most of us to get standard one, but if there has to be standard that's broken, I would want standard one to be broken. Because then on Monday when I have to explain it to you, that one's easy to explain. Standard two, 
and standard four. I want you to get those today because those are hard to fix uh, when they're broken. Uh, the last thing I'm going to do is uh, do something with the vertex down here at the bottom of this one. Um, what are you doing? You're highlighting, you're, you're marking. Some of you know, okay, good, good. I got this one right last time because you, um, you remember what you wrote. Some of you are thinking like, oh, shoot, I don't think I wrote that last time. I need to uh, adjust that. Uh, let's see. One other thing. Oh, yeah, yeah. One other thing, because on standard one, you have to get one right from the top section and one right from the bottom section. It can't be I get them both right on the top. This picture here, um, I don't know if you wrote it in, but if you didn't, I want you to put in the vertex. The vertex is sometimes called the minima. In this case, can someone tell me is what the vertex is? What's the coordinates of that point there? It looks like it goes over how many times? One, two, okay, three comma, how many times does it go down? Two, all right, three comma negative two, there's the vertex. If you can write down that vertex, to get the formula for this one, it's a freebie. If you can write the vertex, here's how it goes. The formula, the first number goes with the first part, the second number goes with the second part. I'm about to leave this one alone. I'm about to leave standard one uh, in 40 seconds. Hey, Thomas, please write down the formula for this parabola. Fine, here it goes. Y equals uh, x. The 3 goes with the x. x to minus 3. I have to do the opposite for the first one. And then the 2 just goes here at the end. Take a look at that. See if that's confusing. Standard 1. Again, this is a standard where if you had to miss one, okay, miss standard 1. Because how easy is it for me to tell you to write the... Um, the vertex. And then for the formula, the first one, you use the opposite. The second one, just as is. Alright. Any questions on standard one before I leave it? I'm about to leave it. One hand, I think on the uh, on the assessment, they say something like uh, it moves to the right or it moves to the left. What is the formula? They don't even want you to draw the picture. Um, they just ask you to move it and write the formula. So just be aware if it moves to the right or to the left. Uh, right or to the left, you just need the parenthesis. Up or down, you need the guy at the end. Um, uh, form because on this one they say here, uh, this original picture they want you to move it uh, two units to the left of where it is, uh, two units to the left, um, and then one unit down. So they want you to start go two units to the left, one, two, and one down. Then they want me to give the form of that new guy. Watch this. All I have to do is write down this new, um, the new vertex. The new vertex of this guy is a 1, comma, negative 3. This new vertex. Hey, Thomas, write out the form for that one. That's pretty tricky, huh? No. Y equals, for x and the first number. The second number goes outside at the end. They go in the same order. Um, and then again, the question is, what do I do with that one? It always has to be the opposite sign. So again, if you can write the vertex, you win. If you can't write the vertex, then Monday is going to be your special day. So it'll help you learn how to write the vertex. All right. Standard one, I need you to get two out of four today. That's one. Here it comes to uh, the computers. Um, you'll type in with me uh, the computers. Let's see if I can get my decimals up. Um, if I get my decimals up, this one is the one I think we ran out of time. Some people got it in, so I'm only going to do kind of one or two on this one. Uh, here it goes. So bring up decimals if you haven't already. Uh, to get to decimals, of course, decimals.com. Again, if you know you got to this section, you aced this section, uh, what could you be doing? Uh, again, look at your pages to, to determine um, what your six pages may be for this unit. So there's decimals. Um, what are some of the formulas? They're going to have it on the page. We only ran out of time on this one for some of you. Uh, you have it on the page. Let's type in the general form of the V. The, um, well, no, let's do one that's familiar first. Let's do the one we just did. Y equals, you're trying to type this in, Y equals, you need the letter A. Uh, I need the uh, parentheses. Again, on there, you can click on the parentheses here. Down there, just like I'm doing. 
um, x minus um, h. But how am I going to memorize this formula, Thomas? It's on there, so you're not memorizing anything. Um, and then I need a, how do I get that squared? I can go to this a to the second power. That's anytime I want something squared. Go down here and I click on it. Boom, there's a 2. Um, then I hit my right arrow to make sure that I'm not floating up there with a 2. I'm going to come around and check everyone's uh, thing. Um, some of you will need this one, some of you don't. But just to make sure that everyone will have typed it in at least one time. I'm not going to stay here long. You can type it in. Um, then, you do, then uh, I need a plus and I need a K. There it is. Once you get all that in, you have that all. I'm going to click on that all. Um, if you got this one right last, I'm still going to have you type it in now. That way, I, when I look around, I will know who should have typed it in and who shouldn't. I can't tell because I don't know your test in my head. Um, look at that. My 15 minutes are already gone, but I'm on standard two. Okay. You're doing okay. I'm trying to get you to your buckets filled. Again, uh, I'm doing the two easy sections first. I'm going to end it with the hard one, so that right after the hard one, you can go right through to the test of the hard one. All right, uh, so um, coming on, peek for a second just to make sure everyone has theirs in. I'm also going to type in the one with the absolute value. And let me make up a point. Let me see if I can get this thing. That's two negatives. Uh, sure, what do I care what it is? Basically, I'm going to try and move my um, my parabola to land right where this one is. Once I do, um, I'll get some new numbers for the H, um, Y, and the K, A, the H, and the K, and I'll write out the formula for you. You'll see what I mean in a second. I'll put it right below this in a second so you can see, oh, that's all we're doing. But what I'm checking now is just to make sure that there's some parabolas in there. I see some red lines, I see some reds. Okay. Right, I see some reds, I see some reds. Alright, um, alright, so some red. Again, if you, um, aced this section last time, uh, I'm not stressing on you that much. I know there were one or two who did. Um, alright, so in the end, all I do is I use my sliders. Um, so again today, once you get there, um, you'll get some choices to make, which is, I'm going to do either the hard stuff and save the easy stuff for Monday, or B, I'm going to get the easy stuff, save the hard stuff for Monday, which, that saving the hard stuff for Monday is a bad idea. Um, Nonetheless, I'm going to slide this over, uh, let's see, I need my H. Nope, no. All right, uh, will you let me slide? All right, sure, sure, sure. Just this easy. Um, if I needed it to be, like, a little narrower, um, let's see, was that, uh, can I erase that? The only reason, oh, notice if it's a negative, I make it flip down. Uh, I don't think they do a negative, but if you needed a negative, all right, what do you do for me? All right, just wide enough. Crazy. Uh, standard three, if you're like, okay, I need to save anything for Monday, I need more time for the other stuff, boom, standard three, save it, because this one, everyone, whether they fix it the first time, they fix it the second time. This is also one of the sections where you need to get a three in one of the four sections. This is usually a three. Here comes, um, let's see. Hey, so I got the picture there, Tom, but how do I write down the answer? Here it comes. All of the numbers are regular except for the H. Whatever H is is going to wind up having to be the opposite. But everybody else is exactly the same thing. Uh, what does he mean? He writes down, um, I'm about to leave, um, I'm going to plug in one more, and then I'll leave it just to show it's the same thing for all of them. I'm going to write down an ugly one. That there's an ABC problem. Uh, let's see. A is a 1.2. X with the y, the h is a 2.9, but whatever the sign is on it, you gotta do the opposite. And then the plus k, where is k? Look at it, see if you're like wondering, like it doesn't mean anything to you. I'm gonna leave this in, in uh, two minutes so you can get to the hard stuff. If any bit it happens to be hard. All right, um, I'm gonna type in two others and then delete. So do this with me. Um, Type in the absolute value one. That way you just got that. Again, if you got this one, um, you could look at papers to see what your um, where am I? what your six pages might be. So here, type in the same thing. It's going to be, instead of this being a parenthesis, it's going to be absolute value, and it's not going to be a 2. So type in y equals a. 
absolute value y equals a. What's also true is technically you don't have to pick the y equals on decimals. Um, you can actually, and I'll do it, you can actually just type in, no, no, just keep it simple, keep it the same. But, uh, a, where's the absolute value? Oh, it's still a trapped in jail. Yeah, you don't want to be trapped in jail. If you are, you say you're an absolute value of, I don't know, whatever. All right, let's just, just stick with the math, stick with the math. X minus H, that part stays the same. How do I get out of there? I hit my right arrow, I hit my right arrow. This one, I think I brushed at the end and um, the time ran out. Again, today I'm trying to get you 45 minutes for you to have to be able to do two, two, um, what is the word looking for? Two, two standards. What if I wasn't here last time? Won't I run out of time? Yeah, yeah, you will. Um, so you'll have to either come back later. After class, I don't have class for you then. All right. Uh, we have that one in. Um, same idea. If I were to hit the sliders, I think these sliders, let me see if these sliders are going to move it with two things on there. No, they only touch that one. So what would he do? He would go up, down, and he'll delete the other guy. That's what he would do. I don't need you to move the uh, this one around. It's going to move it around the same way. How can I? What if I delete you? Uh, will the slider do stuff for you? I'll delete all these guys. Okay, and then there's my all again. Alright, um, what's the last one he wants you to move? Any idea? The last one he wants you to type in is the ABC. Here's the ABC. Last one you have to type in. I'm leaving this after this one. I'll say, are there any questions? Um, and you'll get to feel your amygdala like, oh shoot. I hope that's not on the test. Yeah, yeah, it is there. Um, the a x squared. How do I get a squared on that x? There's two ways. You can hit the squared button, or if ever you need to raise something to a power, you can hit shift and number six. That caret button, shift and number six, will do it. So if I do shift and number six, it puts it up there. I can hit my number two. But now see, it's all floating in the air. That little cursor is blinking up in the air. How do I get it back down? Because if I hit a plus sign. I thought I was going to have to hit the arrow. In any case, the second one is BX. BX. How does he have this thing memorized? It's on your test. So you're not, you don't have to memorize anything. I'll give you the letters. You just type them in. BX plus C. This is the general form of a parabola. Plus C, where's the C? Um, after I move this one around, then I'll leave this alone. I don't know if I take too much time. Okay, that's really good. 60 seconds on this one. Let's get rid of you. You and you. Um, you erase all these letters. Um, when I hit here, I'm going to leave this circle and the hard one. Two easies. That way, you, everyone gets half of it right. Um, same idea if I were moving it around. Slider, slider, let's see. Can I move you? Can I move you? Let's see. Let's see, moves it down. Okay. And then slide you over. B, what do you do? Uh oh, these are a little bit harder. But still, uh, get as close as you can on this one. Come on. Come over, over B. All right, well, you get the idea. Now, let's imagine I would say this to the teacher. I couldn't get it right on it. Um, I, I can show you on the computer how close I got. Uh, I couldn't get it on it, so I used these numbers. Um, I would take it. Um, I think on the actual test, they probably put it somewhere where it would actually get to it. Nonetheless, uh, how would I write this answer? And I'm leaving, leaving this now. This is it. Uh, what's my A? 0 0.7. The X squared doesn't change. What's the B? That looks like a 2. Um, I'm recording this part. 2X. And then what's the C? It's a minus, um, what's this? All right. Hey, in this section, how many of these do I need to get? They have like about five of them. You really actually only need two of them to win. And there are two parabolas. There's a little B thing. So this section, everyone should get at least a three on this section. All right, I'm leaving it. I'm down to the last two. Pause, though. 
I need to write the equation of a circle. They put it on a test, and that's the only reason I really need to know it. In life, I'm never going to be trying to figure out um, how big a circle I'm going to make in a backyard. I'd probably just tie a string, I'll put in a nail, and stretch it out, and then I can get my whole circle. I don't have to figure it out. But because it's on the test, could you help me? Yes, I can. The key is the center. If you can get the center, then you can get the equation. Uh, the center is just like this. On um, this one, I gave, I made up a center. I think I did three comma two. Is it three regular two or three negative two? Three regular two. I need to do one with a negative. Oh, let's do three regular two. Here's the beauty of this thing. The equation says this. Whatever the first number is, put in the parentheses with the first number. I mean, with, with the x. Whatever the second number is, put in the parentheses with the y. Uh, what did I say the radius was on this one? Did I do one? R had to be something. Alright. So it comes that last page. Wait, wait. All you're saying is they're going to give you the two numbers, and then you're just going to write down the answer as, I'll put it all the way down here. You can highlight it. Um, the X with the 3. I won't even put in the sign first, just so it can be so easy. The 2 is with the Y. I'm not even going to put in the sign yet, just so it can be so easy. And again, if you got this one right, I know if you're working on your six pages, that's fine. The R, you're not even thinking about the R. Oops, R should be a number. All right, so this is standard four. This is the last one. Um, again, if you're getting any of them right, I want you to get four and two. That way, the other two are kind of easy. Hey, now that I have all my numbers, what am I going to do? Well, it goes like this. Everybody gets a baby two. You get a baby two. You get a baby two. You get a baby two. The plus sign, he's just a plus sign. Equal sign, he's nothing special. What about the signs in the middle, Thomas? You always have to do the opposite sign. So if it's a positive three, negative three. Positive two, negative two, right? Just one. That's just one. Give me the center. Write down the center on your um, assessment. And then automatically, first guy first, second guy second, third guy third. Change the signs, you're a winner. Call a baby two, oh, wait, 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 uh, all to the second power. They do want you to draw the picture, so I will draw the picture on this one. Where is three comma two? Where's the center? Three comma two. There's the center. Um, how do I draw it? The whatever the radius is, I count out one two, one two, one two, in all four directions. Connect the dots. And there it is. Um, look at it, see if you feel anything about it. I'm going to do it on this paragraph because they do a paragraph version on the test. I just want you to feel how easy it is. I hope one of these numbers is a negative number. I hope it is. Oh, good, good. That's good, they do a negative. But, uh, any questions about my formula here? Where'd you get the 3? Where'd you get the 2? Why is it minus? Where'd you get the little red 2? Alright, I do one here. Um, and I'm gonna leave it after that. After that, I'm gonna do the last one, super hard one. I don't know how much brain power you have left, but right now you have three out of four standards. All right. Um, I'm gonna do this bottom guy. I don't think I said the bottom guy the same way um, I would have wanted to, um, but I'm gonna see if I can say it. Um, I don't think, I think I drew arrows last time. I'm so disappointed. I didn't draw arrows in the other class because I realized, oh, shoot. I drew arrows on red class, yellow class. You guys are getting the good stuff because I tested out on red class. Did it work? No, it didn't work. All right, do it differently. So you guys get the first version of it. Um, they get the 2.0, but here's the version they got. When we read all of this, we're going to write down what the center is. Once you write down the center without drawing arrows, um, then boom, here it comes. So I'm going to put the dot where it goes. Write that center down and get the equation. And I'm going to ask a question. And I'm going to let it be. Here it comes. Um, the circle has been moved from the origin. Origin, for those who don't know, is right here in the very center. Um, it has been moved three units to the right. Okay, I see three units to the right and two units down. I'm just going to put that dot in. I wish I would have said this to you this way. Move it three units to the right. One, two, three, and two down. Uh, let's see. One, two, three. One, two. I wish I would have said, put in your dot. And then write down what that um, the coordinates are. This is a three comma negative two. Three comma negative two. I wish I would have said that to you. 
Then I'll put that 3, negative 2 right there. Here is the beauty. With this big paragraph, it doesn't matter. The minute I get that center by putting it where they told me to, 3, 2, I am ready to do this thing again. Oh, the same numbers. I wonder if that's by accident. The 3 goes with the X. I'm not even going to put in the sign on it. The 2 goes with the Y. I'm not even going to put in the sign on it. And R. Did you guys give me an R? Oh, yeah. Um, uh, I keep doing the R thing. The one thing I'm going to have you do so that that paper that I handed out to you... No, we don't have time. Maybe I'll do it on Monday, or I'll make it one of your six. I'm going to have you switch something on the paper that you have. Um, so let me finish this one off. The radius is the four. Here comes everybody gets a baby two. Hey, there's a two for you. How about a two for you? Two for you. Um, inside, it was a positive three. It has to be a negative three. Inside, it was a negative two. It has to be a positive two. That's the only part you have to remember. Flip them. They have to be the opposite. How do you know? The formula says I want uh, the opposite of H. The opposite of H. Okay. Look at it. Look at it. I'm not going to say much about it. Hey, no, Thomas, you didn't even draw the picture. Okay, yeah. One, two, three, four. 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 Pause, let the brain relax on that one. Here we go. Standard two. Standard two, we have to factor this thing here, this, this equation here. We have to do something with this. You have your calculators because step one, now uh, I almost wish you didn't have stuff written there, but you do. So you may want to highlight step one. To factor this thing, this three that's in front of the square term can't be there. How do you get rid of it? You divide that 3 uh, under every 1. So uh, in your calculators, um, uh, if you do it just one last time, um, if you divide the 3, well, I guess the 3 into the last one is the only one that matters, but watch this. If I divided the 3 or factored it out, here's what I'd be left with. A 3 in a parenthesis. What's going to be left in a parenthesis? All the letters and the new numbers. 3 goes into 3 one time, so it disappears, leaving just the t squared. Now leave t squared in black. T squared in black. If you, uh, on your calculus, just so you can practice doing negative numbers, hit that negative sign below the number 3. Do negative 9 divided by a negative 3. Just punch it in just, just this time. Just, um, again, because part of the course is being good with your um, graphing calculators. Now, I know some of you got this one right last time. Um, in your calculator, you say negative 9 divided by negative 3 should be a positive 3. This is going to be 10 minutes. And yeah, that's going to be 10 minutes. And then the last part. So uh, the whole, um, what did the 84 divided by the negative 3? Someone do that so I can know what that actually came out to. It, yeah, okay, negative 28. All right. So far, you haven't had to use your brain. So far, you had to do is punch into a calculator. The only part you have to remember and maybe you want to highlight it, is that number that's at the very front. Um, it's the coefficient, it's the efficient name, but I don't want to get all technical. That leading coefficient, you divide him into every one, and here's what you're left with. Here's the part that some of you are going to mess up on. Hey, I don't know uh, how to multiply positive and negatives. I never was good with that, so that's going to mess me up. Hey, I was never really good with adding positive and negatives. At this point, you're dead in the water. There's, there's no trick I have, other than you have a calculator that can maybe, if you had to guess, you can try to that. So here's the trickiest part right here. If you had to save this for Monday, because you can get it, fine. Step one, to factor, please double underline factor. Factor means I need to produce two parentheses. Oh, maybe that part. Uh, in the two parentheses, even though they use the letter T, uh, I'll have you use the letter X. I mean, T is the correct letter, but this is the way it normally shows up. All right, so here's what we do. We put this big X here. And the last number, I wish somebody could highlight this guy. The, the, um, the last number goes on top, negative 28. The middle number goes on the bottom. So far, you're not using any math. 
All right, so I'm feeling good. I'm not nervous for you. Here's what I'm nervous for you. What are two numbers that when you multiply them, it'll give you a 28, but when you add those same two numbers, it'll give you a 3. And this is the part where, while I'm not really good with time, my time tables, I'm really not good with positive and negatives. I don't know what to say. Uh, let's start with time tables. Four times, uh, four times what? Now, what are two numbers that when you multiply them give you a 28? Um, yeah, 7 and the 4. Um, also, the way you kind of think of it, 7 and 4 are 3 apart. So that kind of way, somebody might say, well, you could do like a like 2 times like 14, right? 2 times 14 is 28, which is true. You calculate 2 times 14. But 2 and 14, they're not 3 apart. They're like, like, like 10 apart, they're like too far apart. You can only be as far apart as the bottom number if that helps anybody. All right, um... Here it goes. Um, one of these numbers has to be positive, one has to be negative in order for the 28 to be negative. I'm not good with positive and negative. I don't know how to choose. At least this part, I can give you a trick, and it is this. Whatever the sign is on this bottom guy, the larger number has to do the same sign. So that 7 has to do whatever 3 is doing. If, seven, uh, if 3 is doing positive, 7 has to do positive. So the other do has to be negative. Some little tip I can give you if you're not good with positive and negative. If three were negative, then seven would have to be negative. Seven has to do whatever the bottom dude is doing. Seven is a follower. He's at school trying to be popular. He sees what the other guys are doing. Like, yeah, I'll do it too. Yeah. Don't be like that. Don't be like that in high school. Don't be like that. You'll regret it. Look back like, ah, oh, yeah, I can't be like that. I ain't even like that, dude. All right, here goes. Uh, here it comes. Once you get these two side numbers here, you win at least one out of the four. I just put in that plus seven. I wish I put it in red. I put in that plus seven, and I put in that minus four. And the good news is, if you get this one, you automatically get the second one. If you get the first one, you automatically get the second one. The bad news is, you miss the first one, you automatically miss the second one. So I hate this problem. Um, nothing personal. I don't know it. All right, here's the deal. Hey, Thomas, I got my factor form. Now, some people, they just leave the X there. I, I did no, no. You haven't factored it until blang, blang. These two guys are in parentheses. Hey, how do I get my zeros? I don't even know what they are, but just how do I get them? The zeros are always the same number, but the opposite sign. Uh, in other words, I'll put it right below it so you can kind of feel it. What number do I need to put in the place of X so that this part will turn into a zero? Well, if this were a negative 7, negative 7 plus 7 is 0. In other words, the same number with the opposite sign will get me a 0. Can someone tell me what the 0 will be for the negative 4? Uh -huh, I hear it. It's always the same number but the opposite sign. If this were a positive 4, 4 minus 4 is 0. And this is how you write a 0. Now, I'm doing it right up here, but technically you're supposed to write them down here. Why would he say the hardest thing for the end, uh, as soon as you spoil their brain part, right after I finish this, I give you your test. And it's going to be like, oh, okay, I remember we divided the three thing. Okay, remember that. We made a big X. I know it's too much information. I did the big X. I put the last one on top. Some people switched it around, and they couldn't finish it. Somebody put the middle one on top, and then the last one on the bottom, and they were stuck. They were like, what are two numbers that if I multiply them, I get a 3, but if I add them, I get a negative 28. And so they were stuck, they couldn't do it. So if you, when you get your paper back, you were like completely stuck without someone, chances are you put them in the wrong order. All right. Got my factors. And if you have to check the difference between the factors and a zero, factors have the letter X plus something in it. Zeros have a zero in it. So that way if you're like, okay, which ones are the zeros, which ones are the factors? The zeros have a little comma and a zero in it. There's no plus or minus in between it. The factors have to have x at the beginning and plus something or minus. All right, I feel the brain power leaving. I got two out of three. I need just one more. One more and I win this section. I factored it, that's one point. I got my zeros, that's two points. One more, I win. Come on, Thomas, you can win. You are a winner. Here it comes. Um, they put them out of order, which I wish they would have put um, what I'm about to do next. Uh, in order, um, the line of symmetry is the next easiest one. 
Um, and some people even on their test, they put the line of symmetry thing here. Um, I'll put it out of order as well. Watch this. To get the line of symmetry, my LOS. If I have a calculator I can add and divide by 2, I win. You have calculators, and so you can add the first guy. Come on, you can do this. Um, how am I going to write it? I'll write it this way. I'm going to put it out of order. All right, I'm finding the line of symmetry. What I do is I add the first guy to the second guy. Calculate, you can put in a negative 7, you can put in a 4, and then I automatically divide by 2, every time by 2. If I can punch that in. Hey, Tom, I'm not going to remember all this. Okay, but at least you know it's easy. You can't remember it all. Um, someone on the calculator do negative 7 plus a 4. Tell me what it comes up to, or in your brain, if you're that good. Negative 3. She is that good. And then, um, like... Technically, they're trying to find out what's halfway between these two numbers. To find out what's halfway between these two numbers, we get all of their money together, and then we just chop it in half. Once we chop it in half, that's what it's telling us. Yeah. Oh, oh, oh. Uh, once I do this, I'm going to say something to the, the people who did the back part, but you didn't know how to explain what it meant. Um, so I'm going to say that to you. The others, I'll have them go to sleep for a moment. The others, I'll, I'll say that little piece to you. Um, but let me get this. Um, here comes... Um, it's a negative 1.5. 1.5. But I'm not good with decimals. I don't care. I don't care. Punch in your calculator. Oh, no, I'm sorry. Just punch in your calculator. Punch in your calculator is what I'm saying to you. And, uh, pause. If you can do these three, you win this section. Take a look at it. Just see how you feel about it. I haven't even done that last part, which I may or may not do. That's good. Okay, right, let me say something to the to the four people. Who are the four people? Standard two, you did this first section, you flipped the page, and you did it again on that back part, but then it says, what does this mean in the context of this problem? I'm going to say this part um, for uh, three, and then I may say that last thing. First, um, um, the zeros. Um, this is a, is he throwing a rocket? Just, this is for, and not, not for everybody. So you, this, that's for the four people. Um, when this rocket uh, shoots off, this people who did the back page. And that's what does it mean, okay? I'm going to tell you about the line of symmetry and the zeros. Here are the zeros. Uh, what does it mean in this problem? Let's say you're at negative seven and you're at four. These are the places where the rocket hits the ground. Your zeros, like uh, if you ever 9/11, um, it's ground zero. You know, ground is where it happened. Ground zero. Zero is where um, the rocket hits the ground. Okay, not for everybody. Just the people who are forced. The others you can relax from that. Um, what is the line of symmetry? The line of symmetry. This is 1.5, negative 1.5, and it doesn't kind of match. But the line of symmetry is the point uh, where the rocket will be at the highest. So the rocket is, is going up in the air. When it hits this max point here, um, which happens to be the vertex, the line of symmetry tells you when the rocket is the highest. Um, what is the maxima minima in this context? Not for everybody. This is important people. Um, those are the coordinates of the highest point. So, uh, oh, did you do it in time? I'm sorry, I'm sorry, uh, poor people. The line of symmetry this 1.5 is the time when the rocket will be at the highest. So the line of symmetry, well, this is the time when it will be at the highest. The vertex, which is that last answer, the maximum minimum, that is the highest point the rocket will be. Uh, highest point. I don't know what the answer is for the factor, so... Put teacher didn't know. No, no, I don't put teacher didn't know. Um, but for your zeros, those are points where the rocket hits the ground. The uh, uh, line of symmetry, that's the time when the rocket will be at the highest point, uh, like right here. And then the maxima is the highest point that'll be. Um, I got two minutes and I have to hand out this test. So I've done three pieces. I'm going to do this last piece, which you don't need. But if you can put it into your calculator, you win. 
the maxima, um, which again, um, I should have written this part up here, but it's down here. So for the line of symmetry at the end right now, line of symmetry does have to be written as an equation. It has to be written as x equals the 1, negative 1.5. You can stop listening right now, but I'm going to do this big, heavy part. so you can get the last part. How do I get the maxima? Which, again, I switch these two. I write down the original equation, which was like maybe negative 3t squared. Uh, what was the middle part? Like a 9? Thank you. And then the m was a 84? Plus 84? This is the last part. You don't need this part. But if you have your calculator, to get the, the maxima, you take whatever the x was at the line of symmetry, the time when it's at the highest, and you replace all the letters with it. Negative 1.5. Negative 1.5. Everyone do me a favor on your calculus. Please hit blue button uh, mode. Blue button quit. It's the same button. It's right next door to it. That takes you back to regular calculator. You will do this on regular calculator. You won't do this on y equals. I'm going to ask everybody to try and type it in, and that will be the final thing we do here. You will have essentially close to 30 minutes to do half a test. But most of you have done most of it. You will decide where I'm going to begin. If your teacher tells you where to begin, it would be do standard two first, hit up the circle second, and then from there, if you want to do computer or the parabola, we did not put it on the board, so it'll be standard on um, two, four, um, one, three, two, four, one, three, put I'm going to write on the board. Once you get started, though, whatever you choose, you're charging your own life. You know what I mean? All right. Um, if you punch all this stuff in, somebody's going to tell me uh, it comes out to something. 90.75? How do you write the maxima? The maxima has to be written as an ordered pair with this x here, that 1.5 first, and whatever answer you got to this problem. Second. Hey, Thomas, that's too much information. Fine, don't do that. Because you only need three out of these four. And the three easy are factor, zero, line of symmetry. Now, this part just punching into a calculator, so that's another issue altogether. But today I'm just trying to get you as much as possible so that on Monday, some of you will be done. Your test will be passed. We'll give you six pages. And uh, hooray, you win. I just help you fill your second um, notch in your bucket. When you guys grow old, become rich, you guys, you'll, you'll send me money and prizes. And yeah, that fool helped me. Yeah. All right, maybe not. I got my fingers crossed on it. You never know. You never know. Like, what? Who sent this car? It was. It worked. Of course, I'll be 84 and I can't drive, but whatever. I don't care. Uh, so here's the deal. Um, get your mind together. I'll give you about 60 seconds, whatever you need to do, if you need to look at the circle thing one last time, maybe the logistic one last time, maybe the parabola one last time, look at it. Uh, I'll give you a test in just a moment. Again, I think about two or three of you in here, you got pretty close to the end, so when you get yours, you can review it one last time, make sure it's what you want it to be. Um, after that, my recommendation is to use the mental health system, so that's Monday. Um, 